are you sick? No, 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 no. I, they, uh, this is all just, you know, a precaution. They're, you know, just making sure. But you were with them. You could still get it. No, I, I won't. They, they, um, they said this happens really, really fast. All right, so this movie was so scary, but not in a chop your head off kind of way, like in such a real way. Yeah. After shooting it, did were you just a little bit more aware of like what could happen and maybe a little bit nervous about? Definitely, yeah. definitely. Uh, I, we definitely, my whole family washes their hands more now. Uh, but you know, it, the germs are kind of, you know, they're a part of life and you know that, you know, and, and, and you need them to build up your immunities and, and, uh, and we live in New York City and you know, part of that life means kind of sharing community spaces and, and uh, you know, so I mean, I think it's, our awareness is up, but we're not kind of uh, unreasonably scared. Yeah, but I mean, it's, it's a little extra for you, because I'm, I'm sure people meet you, all, see you all the time and want to shake your hand because they love all your work and everything, and I mean, you have to interact with, with people a lot different. Do you think that, you know, maybe just people being aware of this might change some of societal norms, like shaking hands all the time and stuff like that? I don't know. I mean, you know, Lawrence has that line at the end, you know, that, which is great about shaking hands, about why, where it came from and why we do it. And, and, you know, it's essentially a really dated practice, you know. I mean, there's no reason for me to show you that I'm not carrying a weapon, you know. Right, I, mean, right, right, I right. think that's assumed, right? Right. So, uh, but still, you know, we do it. We're, 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 we're creatures of habit and culture, and, and so... You know, I don't see that, I don't see that really changing. The drug ribavirin has been shown to be effective against this virus. Yet, Homeland Security is telling the CDC not to make any announcements until stockpiles of the drug can be secure. Well, Dr. Gupta, there continue to be evaluations of several drugs, ribavirin is among them. But right now, our best defense has been social distancing. No handshaking, staying home when you're sick, washing your hands frequently. Let me bring in Alan Crumwoody into this debate as well. Uh, Alan's a freelance journalist. Uh, he was uh, the first to track the Shinko Bus Man video. Uh, Alan, uh, today on Twitter, you, you wrote that the truth about this virus is being kept from the world by the CDC, by the World Health Organization, to allow friends of the current administration to benefit from it, both financially and physically. Uh, there are therapies we know are effective right now, like forsythia, and they don't even appear on the CDC website. On your blog, you also wrote that the World Health Organization is somehow in bed with pharmaceutical companies? Because they are. That's who stands to gain from this. They're working hand in glove. What do you think about the politics behind contagion and other pathogens where the government might, on the side of caution, not tell everybody till you know, maybe it's too late? Like, it could be going on right now. We don't know. Well, I mean, I think the media would be a big part, too, because, because how that was framed to people would uh, would dictate really what uh, what the outcome might be. I mean, because it's not really about necessarily the virus itself. It's about our reaction to it. And right. you know, if you look at like anthrax, like what two people died and we shut down the airline industry, you know, yeah. that that panic is uh, uh, potentially a lot more lethal than than uh, than the actual virus or could be. Now, I love all your work and everything, but I want to take a time to speak about H2O Africa and what you're doing with there, because I know it's not similar to contagion at right. all, but I mean, at the same time, there are diseases like cholera that hit Haiti because of yes. not having clean water. Yeah. What was the, the motivation behind you getting into this organization? Well, we're now, we've transitioned, we're now called water.org, and, and, we're, and we're all over the place, not just in Africa, and uh, we're in India and Haiti and, uh, <clears throat> and in, uh, it, it, we're, we're, we're hopefully going to be everywhere, you know. Uh, there's a, a, a disturbing statistic that every, every 15 seconds uh, a child uh, under the age of five dies somewhere on our planet because of lack of clean a access to clean water and sanitation. I mean, it's just staggering. Four kids a minute are dying. And, and for a reason that, that it's really hard for Americans to relate to because right. we've never had the experience of not having water. I mean, if you need water, you go to the faucet and turn it on. Or, you know, there's, there's water fountains in the parks. There's, you know, there, there, there's, there's an abundance of clean water for us. And, um, and so even getting people to understand that this is a reality for, for so many people on our planet uh, is kind of the first hurdle we have to clear. 
Well, I always liked you as an actor, but because of your work now, I, I even like you more as a person. So uh, I, I appreciate you. that, and I uh, appreciate all your work, and keep on following whatever you do. Thanks, Jamal. Appreciate Thank it. You.